Welcome back to New Day. For the first time testifying before Congress, five CIA contractors who were eyewitnesses to the attack on the American consulate in Benghazi. In closed door meetings last week, the witnesses gave their first hand accounts. And joining us now exclusively is the chair of the House Intelligence Subcommittee, who in, who's handling these investigations, Congressman Lynn Westmoreland of Georgia. You questioned all of these witnesses, Congressman. Thank you so much for coming in. Well, thanks for having me. This is something that you and many of your colleagues have been demanding since the beginning. Getting first hand testimony from the people who were on the ground. This That's is the correct. first time these five CAA contractors have spoken to Congress. So, what did you learn in these closed door meetings? Does their timeline coordinate with what the administration has been telling everyone? Well, basically, the timelines are, are the same as far as when these activities started. There's a little discrepancy between, you know, was it 9:32? Was it 9:42? But basically, we know when it started. The big question has been, was there any l lull in the activity? And, you know, in Benghazi, after talking to these guys, it wasn't unusual at night to hear gunfire or explosions or whatever. So once they got back to the annex, uh, they did take some uh, small arms fire, maybe an RPG. Uh, but, you know, during the night it was probably they were probably arranging for the attack that happened about five and so yes there was movement probably all night and there was probably some probing fire but as far as an un you know just an ongoing gun battle that was not true and the reason the question of a lull is key to this investigation is because there's been a question all along is could more support have been brought in would air support have made any difference the administration argues no because they believe that it was over after the first attack so do you believe that's accurate well it was not i don't believe it was over after the first attack but i do believe that there was a lull in the fighting now there was still probing uh... you know guns being shot but as far as getting you know somebody else there they have been a directive issued in august of eleven that basically told the personnel in libya you're on your own and so we are looking into that directive to find out exactly who put that out and this was brought to our attention uh... during um, the the hearing so do I mean, you so, when you in speaking with these five contractors do they believe that they were left alone. Do they believe that they did not have, there wasn't the help that they needed, the protection that they needed because of the threat of just the well, reality on the ground in well, Benghazi? First of all, let me say, if it wasn't for these GRS or, or okay. these in, uh, the global response right. staff uh, that was there protecting the annex, I believe every American in Benghazi uh, would have been killed at the complex and at the annex. And uh, these guys were very heroic in what they did. And naturally, they were calling for all the support they could get. I mean, they were fixing to go into an unknown situation, seven of them. And uh, sure, they were calling for support, but uh, they were calling for the ISR or the drone, the, uh, the overhead uh, intelligence. And, uh, you know, they had been in different places in the world and probably were used to having some different type of coverage. And I'm sure they were asking for everything, you know, with the kitchen sink. But what the reality of that coming was, I don't think was ever there. There has been a big question about the non-disclosure agreements mm -hmm. that, they, that CIA operated, that they've been asked to sign, there, that there has been some reporting that the CIA had been trying to prevent its personnel from coming forward from speaking to members of Congress. I mean, it took you guys a year to get them to come speak to you. Do you think that you've been stonewalled? Uh, not by the agency, I don't. Uh, you know, it took us a long time. We wanted to try to get these witnesses back to back. Uh, and you can imagine uh, some of these guys have been redeployed. Uh, some of them had retired. Some of them were working for other companies. They lived in different parts of the United States and different parts of the world. But we wanted to do something like an attorney would do preparing a case. We wanted to get all the FBI, all the CIA, all the State Department. We wanted to get those out. And our committee has had 13 different committee hearings talking to these agencies. Then we wanted the eyewitnesses to come in. The last two or three months has probably just been coordination of trying to get them here together because we didn't want to do them one individually, let what uh, mm -hmm. went in there leak out. So we didn't want to contaminate the witnesses. So that's the reason it took so long. But as far as the non-disclosures, yes, uh, these were done at the Gold Star Ceremony when uh, uh, Ty and Gwen. Does that seem suspicious to you? 
Uh, yes, it does. And we are looking into that. Now, the fact that some of them were modifying their contracts or maybe writing a new contract, uh, doing a new non-disclosure or security agreement is not that unusual. But the ones that aren't, we're, we're looking into that and we're trying to find out why at that time they were asked to do this. Mm -hmm. Now, the non-disclosure does say, I believe it's in uh, the ninth paragraph, that they do have permission with, uh, uh, for unlawful mm -hmm. or improper activity to report the uh, House uh, Intelligence Committee and to the Senate Intelligence Committee. Let me ask you real quick, because this has all gotten very political in the year following this attack. Mm -hmm. Many partisan attacks from both sides on what went down and if there was a cover-up in, in, in the aftermath. From what you know, and you know more than many because you've spoken to the people on the ground, do you believe that everything was done to protect those on the ground? Do you believe this attack could Absolutely have been prevented? Not. Do you think folks did their jobs? Absolutely not. I, and I think this will come back to the State Department. Uh, the RSOs, the regional security officers, there were five of them at the temporary mission facility. When the, uh, the CRS agents got there from the annex, they were, they were not armed. One of them was barefooted. And I think they were totally unprepared for any type of attack. If you look at the compound itself, uh, it is not set up for protection. And if you, when we interviewed these guys, they said that they were really surprised that the uh, lack of security at the mission facility. And they also testified that the people at the facility had been wanting help, requesting help, requesting additional security. And in fact, uh, you know, they, they, they just couldn't believe that those guys were over there as unprepared and unequipped as they were. And I know this isn't a question that you are focusing on in the Intelligence Committee, but do you believe that there was a cover-up cover after the fact? I don't think they knew what they were doing. I mean, I don't know that it was a complete cover-up. I don't think there was any doubt that they knew that it was a coordinated attack. And you can see the results of that by the uh, accuracy of the mortar fire. Uh, that came in at five that morning. But as far as the compound goes, you know, I, I don't think there was ever any uh, uh, either there. And I don't know how they got their communications mixed up. But I think what ended up happening, you had the State Department trying to sell one story, and you had the security, uh, the intelligence community um, uh, that may have been trying to sell another story. It sounds to me like part of your investigation continues. It sounds like you're getting oh, yeah. some answers, but you've got a lot more questions on what went, what went down that night. Yes, ma'am. We, uh, we okay. got uh, some more questions, and uh, we're going to run everything to ground. We have been running everything to ground. We've been chasing every rabbit that's popped its head out of a hole, and uh, we're going to continue to do that. Okay. And as Chairman Rogers, uh, Ranking Member Rupenberger, and, and Speaker Boehner said, you know, we're going to let the facts lead us to the truth. And so that's what we're going to continue to do is just get the facts. Congressman Lynn Westmoreland, thank you so much for coming in this morning. Well, thanks for having me. All right, we'll continue to follow this story, but let's get back to our big story out of the Midwest.